Oh, what year is it? Oh, God, I should get up. Oh. Hi, I'm Jordan. About two summers ago, I released a four-part build series and free plans on a compact mobile bench that I had designed and was proud of and wanted to share. And it sat there for a while on the YouTubes until one day out of the blue, Travis over at the Amazing Shop Nation channel stumbled across it somehow and told his subscribers, of which there are tons, to go check it out. And suddenly I found myself uh, with people with a lot of questions and wanting to see more content, but I had moved. That's right, I lost my garage. We've all been there. Uh, I had that thing set up just how I wanted it and then I moved. And the new garage is in much worse shape. Floors are wreck, walls have holes in them, um, not insulated or anything, but that's okay. I have a shop, I'm just grateful about that. Um, one thing that really helped the move and get it organized fairly quickly into the new space was the use of French cleats. Um, I'm not just talking tools, I mean cabinets, the whole thing. So I'm gonna do my best to show my process for those. A lot of people had asked before about this French cleat tool wall I had. Um, I have a plywood storage for sheet goods that people are interested in, folding table, uh, all kinds of things we're gonna go over. And at the very end, uh, we're gonna build a new clamp rack to hold a lot more clamps than I had before in the same amount of space. So a lot to see and check out. Uh, I hope you can follow along with the way my brain kind of this way, that way, this way, that way, until I come up with something that makes sense. Uh, and so without further ado, let's check out the new shop. Right, here it is. It's about 100 years old. Uh, standard two-car garage for uh, back then. It's very tight, but the ceilings are high, which is nice. Uh, my first move probably should have been to douse the entire thing in bleach and maybe light a match, but I pulled everything out so that I could look around and figure out my plan of attack. And my big decision was to put the cabinets on one side instead of the back of the room, like I had them before. Uh, managed to get the dust collection into that corner, which then sort of dictated putting those shelves next to it. Covering that back window with a large dry erase board enabled me to put that folding table there and my drill press on a shelf. That corner became clamp storage and room to grow and also fortunately left a spot on that side for uh, sheet wood storage and other cutoffs. The heart of the shop is still the octopus and happy to report no issues still going strong and on completion of this shop the first thing i decided to make was something i was missing which is this convenient and elegant cleaning station uh, for paper towels gloves etc and this is a modified plan from uh, your hero and mine travis over at shop nation and next video is going to be dedicated to how i made his design and what i did to modify it now let me walk you through how I did this place. The fun part of construction is often demolition, and I'm clearing this out for my French cleat walls, which I got a lot of questions on last video. And if you don't know, sorry, a French cleat is basically just two pieces of wood with matching 45 degree angles, so they slip into each other and hold. I'm gonna use three inch screws, and uh, I was lucky enough to remember to write down on the bottom one how high I had it off the ground in my last shop. And that just sped things up when I came into this one. I could uh, look at that as reference, measure the same height off the ground, 21 inches, and level it and go from there. The critical part, of course, is make sure you're drilling into the studs. Once you got that first one, I had also marked that I had seven inch spacers between them. So I cut two of those real quickly. And if you did the first one level, you don't really have to worry about the others. Put out your spacers and set your next cleat on top of that. Do some double checking. Do some triple checking. And work your way up that wall. Here's a close up of one of the shelves. It's a piece of three quarter inch ply and I mount the cleat on the back 
to a two by four, which is also screwed into the bottom of the ply. And then those are two two by fours at 45 degree angles. And it's all screws. And honestly, when I made these, I didn't think they would last that long. It was just a bunch of scrap. They were easy to make. And not only have they survived the years, but more importantly, they haven't fallen off and broken any of my stuff or me. And that's that mating 45 I was talking about. When you set it down, it grabs the back of the 45 and then gravity helps keep it in place. This is also a great example of the versatility of a French cleat system because I put those shelves on uh, one, one row too high. And I didn't realize that until after I stepped back and looked and said, God, I, I'm really reaching for these top ones. Now they're all up one too high. Very versatile system, easy to make. So there we go, that corner taken care of. These shop cabinets are the first cabinets I ever made and uh, patting myself on the back, I think I did a really good job on the actual cabinets. The face frames kind of stink, but the cabinets are great. And there's your French cleat. And the matching one that goes on the wall is about two inches narrower than the width of the uh, mating one on the cabinet. And this means you don't have to be super precise and gives you some wiggle room when you hang up the actual cabinet. Similar to the French cleat wall, you really want to concentrate on that first one, make sure it's at the right height, get it level. And then each of the cabinets is the same width. So I could do a equal distance between each one, which was a little over four inches in this case. So I just mark measure out and make sure that there is a two by four to screw the French cleats onto, which I needed to add a little bit at the end there. So I cut a piece, tacked it on, and then I was able to go through and put up all the other cleats. Once those are up, I've got my buddy Brent to stop by and help me hang these. And again, the hard part is getting the cleats right. Once you have those, they literally just hang right on it. Beauty. And uh, if you like looking at other people's cabinets, I know I do, my first one is a hot mess, small pieces, extra screws, things like that. Number two is custom made for my air nailers and my jigsaw and my circular saw. Number three is my other cordless DeWalt series stuff and batteries. Number four, uh, adhesives and some of my finishes. Number five, a uh, slightly smaller one, and that has just some chemicals and yard stuff. All right, the right side's starting to look good. And now, similar to my power tool wall, I have a drill press stand that I made that frees up space beneath it. Uh, same design, and once again, I marked the height before I took it off the other wall. The only difference between this and the other ones is that this has a shelf underneath and it's a little bit bigger. So I'm using these big lag screws and uh, I supported it and then drill four of those suckers in on the bottom and the top to really make sure that's in the wall because it's got some more weight to hold on it. And then I use lag bolts to go uh, through my little drill press to secure it to that shelf. Tighten those from below. And then the drawer has notches cut out to uh, get around those bolts that we just screwed in from the bottom. And I keep my parts for the drill press in there. I found some plans for a decent uh, drill press table that I really like. It's got an adjustable fence and it attaches really easily with two uh, threaded knobs from the bottom. I also got a pretty handy vacuum insert from Rockler that goes under the fence. And uh, that actually works really well when I hook it up to my dust collection. Uh, cut a notch so that you can raise it and lower it. And I will link those plans below. There we go, drill press table, done. Then I had to fix a broken window and this wound up uh, inspiring what happens behind the drill press. Because uh, after I put this up to cover that window above my cabinets, I thought, ooh, I should block the window behind my drill press. So I put up some really cheap plywood back there. And then I realized I had carpenter bees. 
that is a story for another day. Anyway, um, that blocked a little light, but I also like the privacy aspect. Uh, I ran power because I only have two outlets. That's an issue, but got a really heavy duty power strip. And now uh, let's put next to the drill press, the fold down table. Super simple design uh, inspired by an April Wilkerson video I saw a long time ago. Um, it's just two legs that pivot on some bolts and the whole thing is attached to the wall on a two by four with a piano hinge. And the trick is you just wanna make sure you really secure that to the studs when you put it on the wall. And then uh, it'll hold the whole table up. Because I had added that three quarter piece of ply to the wall, I had to add an extra board to the back of the two by four. And then I'm using uh, these four inch timber screws and sinking a bunch of those into the studs once I made sure it was level. And then uh, just get ready to sit it on there. And then you just attach the piano hinge using a buttload of screws. I highly recommend a table like this if you need the room. It's really helpful. To keep it up on the wall, to fold it up, we use some uh, brackets that keep it in place, but I don't have them out yet, and we will get to that momentarily. To do board storage, I like to use these uh, cheap, I don't know, overhead rack things that I got off of the internet. I'll link to those. It's an easy way to just hold a bunch of two by fours, etc., on the ceiling. Okay, in my old shop, uh, it was all about barely sticking out from the wall so I could clear a car right next to it. So I made uh, holders that kept things really tight to the wall. I didn't have them deep. So this was my pipe clamp holder, and I'm gonna put it back up, and that holds, as you can see, six pipe clamps. Easy enough, just sits on a cleat. That corner though, uh, those pipes are in the way, so I decided to get out the old trusty cutter, and I'm pretty sure the gas is up. Sure, those guys have a great sense of humor about copyright infringement. But uh, yeah, always check to make sure your, your gas is off before you do something like that. Anyway, here's another French cleat uh, clamp holder. This was for my smaller clamps. I'll probably have to revise that sooner or later. Put that sucker up. And then uh, the board that we had put up behind the drill press was kind of depressing me. I painted it white and then I thought, ooh, what if we made that dry erase to be a little more useful uh, so I got this little kit, and I gotta say, this kit was just enough to do a four by eight. It goes on really thick, but um, I'm happy I did it. It really works great. Had I known I was gonna go this route, I would have put up a smooth piece of plywood or hardboard or something. This one's really ridged, and it's tough to draw on. Oh, well. My only source of cooling in the shop is this Air King fan. It's small, but it does a surprisingly good job. Not as good as having air conditioning, but I'll take it. And then maybe you're an OCD freak like me with your cords. So I own one of these cord staplers, which I use way too much in my house. Um, and uh, tacked down a bunch of cords. And this was a little foam thing that I made that my daughter got a hold of. And uh, there's a good example of just tacking cords and making things look just the way you like. Look at that. These are great, not my idea. PVC pipe, use a Forstner bit, connect the lines, cut a slant on the end. Drill holders, really fun. Mount those under one of my cabinets. Uh, right by that, a cleat, and the very first shop thing I ever made, a little sandpaper holder out of all MDF. Uh, still going strong, little sandpaper holder. Love you. Once the big stuff's up, the little stuff starts to fill in. I can hang up my crosscut sled, that sander. Uh, I got a screw organizer. Extremely important extension cords. Uh, nothing is permanently plugged in anywhere, so that's how I plug stuff in. Very important, my pegboard tool holder. Um, that's where I keep most of my hand tools. Uh, let's put a little shelf above that between the wall and the furthest cabinet. Um, below that, Looks like space for maybe a couple router jigs, circle maker, uh, a bigger uh, surface for the router. I forget what you call those. And moving up the wall, we got room to put two of my bigger things. I've got an adjustable dado jig for my router and also a miter sled that I'll hang up there. 
Left side of the room, let's start going to that corner. Here's something else you can do with a French cleat. Don't use it as a French cleat, just use it as a board. If you got extras, there's my straight edges. Uh, let's go put up two more. Um, they're just great for hanging whatever. Use them for screws, who cares? Here is my spray paint holder. And there's room for more stuff as I grow. All right, a bunch of people asked about my sheet goods storage. This is something that I found in the family handyman. You literally just attach it to the wall using some big old lag screws just in those two uh, pivot spots there. And then it's got wheels on the front that unlock and the whole thing pivots out from the wall. And the back holds full sheet goods and the front holds cutoffs of varying sizes. My huge recommendation if you make one of these is paint it because it really helps to separate the holder itself from your pieces. But I love that thing. It works amazing. Uh, the window, I'm gonna cover it up and use it. I'm gonna put some of my uh, cordless garden stuff up there. Why not? Ugly little shelves, fill it up. All the space I can. Great. Uh, the persuader. persuader. In case you need to persuade. Uh, one of the more important things in the shop. Brush. And this is right next to the folding table. So as I mentioned before, here's how we keep it up. I made these little aluminum brackets, rounded off the edges, and just these simple little blocks. Um, I'm gonna screw them right into the uh, board, which you'll see, and that sucker just pivots on it, and there's some little grooves I made on the underside of the table, and you just pull them down and that keeps it up. When you wanna release it, you pivot those up. I whipped up a little holder for my dry erase markers. Overhead, I threw up my air filter and my LED lights. There is no reason not to get good LED lights these days. They are cheap, they daisy chain, you only need one plug, they will change your shop. And now a moment, possibly decades in the making, time to clean. For real, having it clean and open really lets me take in and see what still needs to happen. Uh, first of which is I didn't get enough storage for my clamps. So I'm gonna redo that corner right there. Let's make something. Come on, let's make something. We're gonna change that design to uh, use uh, just a simple box that's gonna hold a lot more. Uh, and look, I'm using my dry erase board. As I said, it's, it's really bumpy, which makes it a lot harder to write on. Smooth surface would have been good, but hey, there you have it. And of course, uh, one of my kids immediately discovered it and added their own uh, helpful addition to it. Thank you so much. Octopus, let's go. Uh, I have a whole build series on this if you haven't seen it, if you're interested on the main part of my shop, including this very helpful shelf that you can attach to the side of your small table saw, if you're like me. And look at this, three quarter. It really does help. I was in line. Feels good to be working in the new space where I can actually tell what's going on, I can see everything. And uh, to make a cleat, you just adjust to a 45. And in this particular case, it's gonna be built into the holder itself. Watch them thingies. Use the old adjustable shelf to put my very small bandsaw on. One power cord to rule them all. You use the tools you got, right? Would I like to have a much better bandsaw? Sure, but I can do small things with it, no problem. And this is a really simple holder I'm making. Glue, brad nails. Let's take those pipe clamps off. That's something new in my shop too. No, not that, that. <laughs> Boom.
But hey, look at that clamp rack. We built something. Hey! New shop, operational. And learned a valuable lesson about dry erase boards. Black marker is really hard to get off. Let's just uh, toss it. Yeah, sure. If nothing else, the takeaway from this video, don't use a black dry erase marker with dry erase paint. Um, maybe you got something else out of it though. I hope you enjoyed looking through my shop. I am thrilled to have a working one once again. Uh, as a thank you to Travis and all of his many fans and supporters, next video we will be making this beautiful uh, modification of his design of a paper towel dispenser slash rags slash soap gloves. Uh, Next video, I'll show you how to make this. Links will be provided below for many of the items discussed in this video. If you like the music, please check out my band Quasar What What. Always looking for a good time. And uh, what can I say? If I can do it, you can certainly do it. Take care, be well, and see you soon. Thanks for watching.